Okay, wonderful. So I would like to thank all of you for participating um, in my webinar today. Um, I am Kathy Lean, and I'm um, Managing Director of BK Forex. And today what we're going to talk about is give you a sense of how we make our trade calls. Um, before I begin, however, um, if you bear with me, I um, would like to read to you this disclaimer. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Trading Forex carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to trade any such leveraged products, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you can sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investments, and therefore you should only invest money that um, you can afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with trading on margin and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This information, including commentary and trade ideas provided in bkforex.com, should not be relied upon as a substitute for extensive independent research which should be performed before making your investment decisions. BK Forex LLC and bkforex.com are merely providing this information for your general information. The information and opinions presented do not take into account any particular individual's investment objectives, financial situation, or needs. All investors should obtain advice based upon their unique situation before making any investment decision and should tailor the trade size and leverage of their trading to their personal risk appetite. BK Forex LLC will not be responsible for any losses incurred on investments made by readers and clients as a result of any information contained on BK Forex LLC. BK Forex LLC do not render investment, legal, accounting, tax, or other professional advice if um, Investment, legal tax, or other expert assistance is required. Um, the services of a competent professional should be sought. Okay, so what I want to talk about is uh, first start off by saying um, and let you wonder whether the talking heads on um, TV or the CNBC experts who I am guilty of, I uh, can say that my colleague Boris Schlotzberg is guilty of, is really all that smart. Um, we go on TV very a few times a week. For those of you that have, um, that have watched the Money in Motion show, which is the only FX show out there, the, the question really is, you know, are these talking heads really smart? Well, let me give you a little bit of an insider's look first. I hope you know my colleagues aren't um, on this segment on what really happens um, in a lot of these FX shows. And I'm hoping CNBC is not looking in because they will uh, won't be happy with everything I have to say. But basically, um, when it comes to making the trade calls on television, and you see this in Options Action, you see this in Fast Money, you see this in um, the shows that we do as well. A lot of times, first of all, you know, they want to, they want to appeal to the masses. So even though, you know, my best trade call may be, for example, um, let's say in Euro Pounds, they could care less about that. All they want is a trade call on the euro dollar, a trade call on dollar yen 99% of the time. Because, you know, they believe, and rightfully so, that um, most FX traders concentrate, um, you know, their trading in those two pairs. And, you know, the BIS, Bank of International Settlements data, does show that. But just because that's the most actively traded pairs does not mean that those are the ones with the best opportunities. So come every single week um, when I'm appearing on Money Motion, um, I'll give you a sneak peek that, you know, rather than I having the opportunity to tell my producers what I think the best trade is, they will say to me, Kathy, give me a euro dollar trade. Andy, you're doing dollar yet. Come up with a trade. So even though you know, I try my best to give those trade calls. Um, it's not not necessarily the best opportunity that is out there because instead we're usually designated a currency and we've got to figure out and come up with a trade. And if you ever um, heard what I heard um, what I've said in the past, it's that you know when you stare at your charts long enough, you can make up some type of trade. Now, of course, we try to do our best, but um, that's why you know maybe listening to these talking heads, um, you know and their calls on TV, you know, isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Sometimes it's better to, um, 
and make your own decisions and to understand the thought process of what's happening. Because a lot of times, you know, you know, I have a regular spot on CNBC. I'm a CNBC contributor to Money in Motion, but a lot of the times the other guests that are invited are invited on only because they have these ostentatious calls. I mean, for example, we have Peter Schiff on the show quite often. So why is he on the show? He's on the show because he's been calling for the past few years Gold 5000. And so far, it hasn't gotten there. But it's a bold call. And because it's a bold call, it makes headlines. It's interesting. So... That's why they put them on TV. You see this often in politics where, you know, basically the guests are forced to take these huge, you know, left or right side views, which, you know, they may or may not believe in because that's what sells on TV. And that's what makes people watch, which is that they basically, you know, come on and they say, okay, you know, Euro uh, 150 or Euro to zero or the break of the Euro, where, you know, throughout the whole um, sovereign debt crisis, I had said, you know, the Euro is not going to break up, the Euro is not going to break up, but it's not sexy. It's not interesting. People, what they want to put on television is they want to put the big headlines. So are talking heads really all that smart? Well, I'll let you decide um, and draw your own conclusion on that. But one thing is certain in my opinion, which is regardless of whether talking heads um, are right, the people who are, are invited to speak on CNBC, Bloomberg, or any of the other networks do come with years of experience um, in whatever they're talking about. It could be, you know, gold, it could be FX, it could be, you know, uh, politics. And in the form of, um, in the form of FX, you know, we um, have the experience in, years of experience in the cold, hard reality of trading. And that's why, um, and that's the most important takeaway, in my opinion, from what you hear you know, and what we're saying on TV, because you gotta weed through the noise. You gotta weed through the um, you know these huge crazy claims, which I try not to do at all because I think you know um, that it doesn't reflect reality. And listen to the experience, because experience is the key to refinement. Those of us that are on. Um, money in motion, and those of us you know that um, are are honored enough to be asked on television have at bare minimum been able to, been through different market conditions and um, had experience you know how markets when markets have done well when they trend and have experienced when they range and have experienced a variety of financial market crisis so as a result, we thoroughly understand the fundamental drivers behind the movements that you see, you know, in the FX markets. We also, you know, have the experience of watching multiple markets simultaneously. I mean, Todd is a um, fantastic example of that. He's always bringing up these different S&P charts and, you know, the, these, the Hang Seng versus the, you know, dollar yen and just all these little um, cute little correlations that you may not um, – that you may not be aware of because we do watch multiple markets simultaneously. And I can't speak for the rest of the people, but um, in terms of what you know, I do, I've developed and refined trading strategies on a regular basis. We trade um, at BK Forex Real Money on a regular basis. So even though I'm saying, I started by saying that when it comes to CNBC um, trade calls, what you see on television are those big, you know, kind of loud, long-term calls. In reality, you know, what you should draw from it is, you know, the, the story that we're trying to tell you, the um, trends that we're trying to um, kind of, kind of uh, bring up, you know, to the forefront, and the risks that are involved in, you know, whatever trade that we're talking about right now. But when it comes to a day-to-day -day basis, the way we trade um, is usually far is taking usually involves taking the macro views and um, finding a micro trading opportunity based upon that. I know that's what I do. I know that that's what Todd does. Um, can't speak for Andy or Amelia, but um, I can say that um, basically we take our broad calls and we apply, you know, what I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes, um, tactical trading techniques in order to, um, you know, turn 
some of those longer calls into real shorter term trade opportunities. So if you really want to know what we think and what we believe, probably the best place to listen to them is not necessarily on TV because they ask us, you know, to make the, the, these, you know, bold claims. And they also ask us for these, um, you know, these trades that we may not necessarily, you know, have a clear view on. Is, you know, the best place to look for our views um, is really on Twitter. And, um, you know, Todd's on Twitter, I'm on Twitter, Andy's on Twitter, um, because that's really our micro perspective. And um, that's really where we express our real opinions as opposed to what you hear on TV. So when I said experience is the key to refinement, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about some of the observations that we've had of in the markets based upon our experience. Then I'm going to talk about how we put together our trade calls, both you know for CNBC as well as um, for you know our own trades on a regular basis. So experience is the key to refinement. So with experience, we have, um, and when it comes to trading, we have been able to identify you know what to trade and when to trade, and where the opportunities are in the market. So. As experts in the um, FX market, we focus on what to trade and when to trade. So when it comes to um, positions that we may decide to put up um, during the Asian trading session, um, for example, there's a lot of times at BK4F what we do is we trade news. And we know that when it comes to trading news, and if you're a trader who is awake during the Asian trading session or looking for opportunities during the Asian trading session, usually um, the pairs that you want to look at are the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and the Japanese yen. Because this is the time when Australian, New Zealand, and Chinese data um, are released. And that's, and you know, because these types of economic data are released during that time, those are the currencies that will move. During the European trading session, and these are in Eastern Standard Times, the currencies that will move um, in the early European hours are going to be the euro, the pound, the Swiss franc. You tend to see less movement in the Aussie, in the Kiwi. Um, and during those trading sessions, what we're typically doing is we're trading Eurozone or UK economic data, and we're looking for London market open kind of um, trading opportunities. During the US session, we're trading everything. We're looking for opportunities, and I apologize why this is 7 p.m., but I should say 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. We are trading everything from the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen to dollar cad, and pretty much everything is fair game. We trade U.S. data, you know, any comments that we may have from central bankers. We trade, um, you know, U.S. stock market um, performance as well as the U.S. open. So we like to categorize or like kind of isolate our trading in specific hours to specific currencies. And there's certain things that we um, like to look for. One of the things that we've kind of observed from our trading, um, especially during the Asian hours, is that the Australian dollar will oftentimes, not always, but you know, we've seen it happen often, reach new highs or new lows after a specific piece of economic data. So this is just an example of the Australian retail sales release where, you know, Australian retail sales um, came in much worse than expected, and so you see in this chart that the Aussie dollar basically collapsed um, right after the retail sales report. So it makes a new um, low, basically, after the retail sales report. And then what um, you will notice here is a lot of times after the Aussie data is released, um, there's consolidation, and maybe even a little bit of a, of a retracement. And then, when Europe opens, that's when the next leg lower in the Aussie dollar um, is made. And typically, you'll see a new low made during Europe um, or in the early U.S. hours as a result. Because the point that I'm trying to get to you is that when it comes to trading Australian data, in my experience, from what I observed, is that the real opportunity to trade Australian data is to trade what I call proactively, which is get into the trade before the data is released um, and take a view on it. You know, we always have different biases on economic data that we present to our clients. Um, but the opportunity is really to trade it proactively, which is get in the trade before the data is released. Because typically what will happen with Australian data is that you'll have a knee-jerk shopper reaction. So let's say the data is bad. 
Aussie dollar will sell off aggressively. And once it sells off aggressively, you may have a little bit of additional continuation in the you know, 15 to 30 minutes, maybe maximum hour that follows. But then nothing will happen. It will consolidate, and you know, you're sitting there, let's say you short after the data is released, you're sitting there with you know, no movement, maybe even a little move against you as the Aussie dollar rebounds. And then, you know, Europe opens, sees the horrible Australian data or horrible Chinese data, for example, for example, then takes the Aussie dollar even lower. So in terms of trading opportunities, that means, A, you can either trade the data proactively if you're smart enough to figure out, you know, what the potential surprise is. You know, we help our clients do that. Or two, you um, maybe play the retrace um, after the data is released. Or three, which is probably, in my opinion, the smarter thing to do, is you put a trade shortly before the European Open, expecting that once the European market opens and they see this awful Australian data, or the flip side was a really good piece of Australian data, they, they see that number and they jump in and they pound the Aussie once again. So this is the type of stuff that we learn from experience. And we learn from trading, we learn from, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and, you know, money lost, money gained, um, by watching these, you know, type of things. So, <clears throat> another trading tip that we have is that the pound will oftentimes reverse the European move. And, you know, once again, this hasn't happened all of the time. But, you know, we've watched it happen um, a good number of times from our experience. So, what um, this chart will show you is that um, the rally in the London Open um, to early New York reverses completely during the North American trading session. And... Um, <clears throat> And this is just the kind of, you know, volatility that you tend to see in the currency pair. Why does this happen? This happens because um, London is the most active trading session. And there's a lot of interesting behavior at the start of the London Open. So at the start of the London Open, there tends to be some interesting behavior um, that usually is related to nothing other than position adjustments. Because a lot of, you know, um, Orders may be put on at the onset of late, at the London trading session. Traders may be reacting to some things that may be happening, may have happened overnight um, in other trading sessions. You know, tons and tons of things that happen. And because of that, um, you will oftentimes see, you know, a lot of choppy price action at the London Open, similar to what you see in this chart here, where there's a lot of volatility. So basically, you see that the pound dollar rallies, touches this um, line atop at 162.65, fails to break new highs, then attempts to um, go to the day's low, then tries to rebound again, and then eventually collapses. This type of choppy price action is very indicative of what happens in the pound dollar. But when it breaks, it can break significantly because, um, because the initial adjustments in positioning is over. Another... Um, observation that we've had um, that we take to our that we bring to our trading is with the Canadian dollar um, the Canadian dollar from our observation and from our trading experience um, will oftentimes have a delayed reaction to economic data and I, you know some of you may have noticed this which is that you know cat data comes out and um, let's say it's very very good um, let's say we had a Canadian retail sales number it's hot um, the CAD usually takes a few um, minutes um, to react to the data. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, some people think, all right, um, the CAD data is good, but, you know, how much more momentum can it provide to the Canadian dollar? Um, or, you know, they'll look beneath the headlines to make sure the data um, has no... Um, underlying weakness. But the real reason why this happens oftentimes is because a lot of the times when Canadian data is released, U.S. data is released at the same time. So people are first looking at the U.S. data because that's their top priority because U.S. data tends to have the biggest reaction um, to the FX market. And then they shift their focus to Canadian data, which is why you can t tend to have a delayed reaction. So this is um, an example of a recent um, Canadian 
employment report where the circle is where the Canadian data was released. Um, and the data was very, very good. You know, we had 34,000 jobs created versus 9.9 thousand expected. DollarCAD doesn't react until the 9 o'clock hour. Um, and then when it reacts, it has a couple hours of continuation because the traders are first looking at the um, U.S. data, which, you know, most of the time, CAD employment numbers are released on the same day as U.S. employment numbers. And then once they kind of have um, their opportunity to absorb what the U.S. data means, then they shift their focus to the Canadian data. Here's another example. CAD retail sales comes out much stronger than expected at 8.30, at 0.7% versus 0.2%. Dollar CAD doesn't react to the 9 o'clock hour. So what does this mean for us as traders? What this means is that um, the trading opportunity is, um, and you don't need to rush into this trade is what I'm trying to say. Um, the trading opportunity uh, basically is, gives, there's a trading opportunity that lasts for a little while and you can wait for, um, to make sure that the market kind of agrees with your sentiment before taking the trade. And usually the dollar cap data trades can be a little bit more leisurely because, um, uh, it can be, sorry, I'm just looking at some people's comments about how the, some, the, the charts aren't that clear, but you know, hopefully you can re-log in and you can see them a little bit better. But the point that I want to make is that with the dollar cat data trades, you know, don't first of all, you know, don't be too afraid if you don't get the movement immediately, um, because it does have a pattern and a characteristic of taking a little bit longer to react than other pieces of data. The other way to look at it at it is you have time. If you see the number is bad, you can maybe you have time to get into the trade for, you know, 30 or 40 pips um, in movement in dollar CAD. So these are the things, you know, I talked about whether or not you should believe the talking heads on television, and, you know, I reserve that judgment to yourself about whether or not you should believe what the calls that you're making on, that they're making on TV, including my, myself included, but what we do come with is a lot of, a lot of trading experience that, um, you know, can actually be um, helpful, you know, on a more micro basis. So, and we believe that, you know, whenever we put together our trade ideas, either on a long term, you know, which means a couple days, or short term, which means a couple hours, we believe that there are three ingredients to a perfect trade. And we try to look for, um, we try to make sure that each one of our trades has these three ingredients, which is fundamentals, technicals, and sentiments. And so you'll see that um, whenever we go on television, every one of our trades incorporates these three components. It incorporates fundamentals, technicals, and sentiments. And this is not only what we say on television, but also what we do um, when we, you know, do our trade ideas, which is that we always look for fundamentals, technicals, and sentiment on our side. And that's why you'll notice, oftentimes, we will buy on a breakout or we prefer to buy on a breakout than we do on a retrace because we want fundamentals to be on our side for, um, we want fundamentals to be on our side, sorry, not fundamentals, but sentiment to be on our side for um, all of the various trades because we want the momentum of the market to be moving in our direction before we actually take the trade. When it comes to looking for trading opportunities, we usually take a top-down approach. We start with the big story. We start with what, you know, we think are going to be the big trends um, in the market. So that is why, you know, dollar yen has been such a big um, focus of ours, and rightfully so, because we start with saying, okay, uh, Japan is going to be the most aggressive central bank um, this year in terms of easing monetary policy. We know they're probably going to get even more aggressive when um, the new BOJ governor um, takes office in April. So, you know, a core view maybe to, be sh to short the yen and buy the U.S. dollar. But just because I think that dollar yen should rise does not necessarily mean that I'm just going to jump into the trade. I want to make I want to make sure that technicals and sentiment is on our is is supporting us. So what instead I will do is I'll wait for maybe um, dollar yen to um, you know to either fall to a key support level or better yet rise and break above a key resistance level in, on a relatively strong basis. 
um, before I take the trade. You know, one interesting thing is that two weeks ago, I made a short, uh, sorry, I made a long dollar yen call. Um, buying around 89 something with the stop at 88 and that trade was triggered you know and um, but I made the trade call on CMEC money in motion uh, two days later for BK Forex we actually went short dollar yen and if you remember dollar yen actually did fall from 89 ish down to 8805 and um, we banked our profits on the move lower in our short BK Forex dollar yen trade. And we still survived the um, stop on the money in motion trade. And that's how we trade. We trade just because I have a core view doesn't mean that I'm not going to go short dollar yen if the opportunity presents itself from a fundamental technical and sentiment perspective. Um, because these trade calls you see on television are long term calls. And, um, when in reality, we're fighting the markets, we're trading the markets every single day. And here I have to say, of course, past performance is not indicative of future results, but you know, that's an example of how we trade. So we talk about the big stories. We focus on you know, things, these are kind of big stories that we have traded or you know, will potentially trade in the, in the future past, which are things like the U.S. political quagmire, the European cyber debt, debt crisis, and the rise from it. One of the big, um, one of the big calls that I have um, is this year's, you know, long euros against, you know, the pound, against the Swiss franc, and the reason is because of the euro, um, euro exit, the unwind of the euro exit trade. Um, and I wrote about this, you know, quite often. I've talked about it on TV on how, you know, we are going to see a huge shift in. Um, in funds out of these safe havens in Europe, like UK, like Switzerland, over to the Eurozone. I started to talk about this in December before it started to happen, and now it's beginning to happen. The Financial Times reported on Friday that um, about $100 billion worth of uh, money has, um, capital flow has flowed back into um, the Eurozone, has flowed back into the Eurozone in the fourth quarter. But um, they also talk about how there's still, I believe, let me see if I can get the exact stats to give you an accurate number, that there is um, still $300 billion worth of, sorry, $400 billion worth of money that, um, there's $400 billion worth of money that flowed out of the Eurozone in the first eight months of 2012. And only about 93 billion flowed back into the eurozone in the fourth quarter. So what that means is that there's still money on the sidelines, that there's still a potential for um, this trade to continue. And those are the views that we take. And you know, another other top-down views, things that I'm liking, for example, right now is Aussie dollars falling quite a bit. I believe that one of the biggest surprises this year is going to be the Chinese growth surprise, where China is going to do better than what a lot of people, a lot of us anticipate. And so I'm actually bullish Australian dollars. But just because I'm bullish Australian dollars does not mean that I'm going to stick my hand out and buy right now. Um, that, you know, the Aussie dollars at 104.60. I'm going to wait for um, technicals to confirm. So I'm going to wait for the Aussie dollars to turn a little bit and to show me that it's bottoming before getting into this trade. Because just because you have a core view, it's like Peter Schiff and his 5,000 gold view. Just because he's, you know, bullish gold 5,000, maybe in 10 years he'll be right, or maybe not. But just there's so many different trading opportunities that you can have in between that time um, that may or may not be in the same direction. And this is just a general Oz Dolly chart showing you how you can use technicals to help um, figure out, use technicals to basically, you know, help figure out whether or not it's a good time to trade. This is an older chart, but I have overlaid my Bollinger Bands and um, I hope, you know, I've you know, talked about my Bollinger Bands quite, quite often um, and the general way to look at it is if it's in the one to band upside, it's in the uptrends, if it's in the one to bands and the lower one to bands, it's in downtrends, anything in between puts the currency pair in the range trading zone. So the um, whole idea here is that, um, you know, in this chart, and you know, this is an older chart, in this chart, if the euro dollar is rolling over a little bit. So I would not be buying in this situation. I instead would be looking for maybe the currency pair to rise back above into the uptrend or breaking above these highs, these um, little mini um, double top here before getting into the trade. Or if it falls into the downtrend, then I wait for it to turn back above the first standard deviation Bollinger Band before getting into the trade. This is the tactical 
part of trading. Tap the part of, you know, combining fundamentals and sentiment. And this is just, you know, sentiment where, you know, another part of sentiment is, you know, I may take the trade if I believe that um, the next day Chinese data could be very strong. And that would be the catalyst to get us into, um, to move the trade in that direction. And that's the way we really do trade, which is that we look for fundamental catalysts. That could, we, have, we have a core long-term view. We look for fundamental catalysts to push the trade in our direction, and um, we pick levels where technicals and sentiment would be on our side. Same story, you know, when our core views have been UK, um, is one of my core views that I think, you know, the pound is going to perform terribly this year. It has already. I think it will continue to perform terribly. And I think that one of the greatest risks this year is the possibility of a sovereign downgrade for the UK because data has been um, horrid and the UK government has been missing its budget um, uh, targets. And they're bringing in a new BOE governor um, who is the current Bank of Canada governor, Governor Carney, who is not at all averse to the possibility of increasing stimulus even more. So that you know, presents an opportunity to sell pounds, but once again, I'll be making sure that will I look for sentiments or technicals to be on my side as well as sentiment before taking the trade. So there's a lot of things that um, is involved in trading that go beyond the big ostentatious calls that you hear on television. There are things that may not, you may not understand, which is sometimes currencies will rally on bad news and fall on good news. And the lesson to take from that is that you don't want to be caught up in the short-term um, moves in the currency pairs. And also, you have to respect technicals because sometimes it is quite important because, like, for example, not too long ago, we had a really, you know, you know we had a good Chinese GDP number, and yet the odds dollar fell anyway because the odds dollar was in the downtrend. And so um, it's important to respect fundamentals, to make sure that fundamentals are on your side. And sometimes the opportunity is not in the dollar-based pairs. You know, on CNBC, you'll almost always, you'll almost never see us talk about a cross on money and motion because they don't want that. Because they, you know, they think that, you know, FX traders are not smart enough to know what these crosses are all about. But I know you guys are, and I know that you are smart enough to know um, that sometimes the opportunities are not in the dollar-based pairs. They're in the crosses. And that's why you're seeing these huge breakout moves in Euro Yen and Euro Pounds. I don't think Euro Pounds or Euro Yen is um, a difficult currency pair to understand. But I wish that we could have talked about it on CNBC, but they don't want us to talk about it. because And please don't tell anyone um, about this because um, they would probably kill me and take me off the show. But they want us to talk about the euro dollar and dollar yen all the time. But listen beneath, listen to some of the things that we try to talk about um, during our conversations on the show, where sometimes I'll say, I'll talk about euro pounds, we'll talk about euro yen, uh, Todd will talk about euro Aussie, even though it may not be our trade of the, um, of, the, of the day or the week on the show, it perhaps is the one that we really believe in because um, that's really where really the opportunities lie. So look beyond the dollar-based pairs, you know, because sometimes there are bigger trends in Euro pounds and Euro Aussie. Um, and, you know, listen to what we have to say because sometimes the, um, those, the, the, what you're hearing in the jokes and the conversations are maybe a little bit more um, val valuable than the actual trade call that we're forced to make. Um, how are entries and exits determined? We believe that in FX, Horizontal lines are more important than vertical lines. And that's why, you know, sometimes um, we will buy on a break of a key, of a round number, of a key level, like 135. We buy on a break of 135, or we may take our profits slightly under that level because we know that horizontal lines and round numbers are much more important than vertical lines when it comes to charts. And so that's why in this example here, I'm selling on a break of 129 um, and, and just an example of a trade. Round numbers are difficult to break. Um, the key takeaway is that round numbers are difficult to break, and, but when they do, um, when they are broken, it's big and you know, quite significant. Sentiment is key, in that, and when it comes to um, trading FX, I firmly believe that you want to always have sentiment on your side. But if it's extreme, be careful because you know any any um, adverse moves can trigger a, a big reversal. 
So how can you stay on top of the trends in the FX markets and the stories? Well, there's two types of information. There's obviously scheduled data, which you have on the economic calendar. And that includes things like economic re news releases, central bank meetings like the FOMC meeting that we have this week, G7, G20 meetings. Then there's unscheduled data, the crazy stuff that, you know, can uh, throw off, you know, the, the trends in the currency pair, the crazy stuff that can cause these bursts in price actions. How can you stay on top of that? Well, I mean, first of all, let's, look, let's think about what these crazy stuff are. There are comments from central bankers, um, you know, financial authorities, you know, upgrades, downgrades from rating agencies, any sort of political flashpoints, environmental, economic disasters, you know, all this stuff that is unanticipated. Um, the best places for um, free scheduled data are going to be on the FX Street calendar, Forex Factory calendar, Daily FX calendar, whatever is your favorite. Best places for unscheduled data um, would be Bloomberg and Reuters. And, you know, um, I, I you know, go through my Bloomberg terminal with, um, you know, our, our um, clients every single week on Wednesdays during our World's Market Wednesdays. But they're expensive. I mean, Bloomberg costs $2,000 a month. Reuters costs $1,700 a month. So what are the best resources for free daily color and analysis? In my opinion, it's um, on Twitter. Um, and these days, there's tons and tons of valuable information on Twitter. And so I encourage you to follow me and Boris on Twitter at KathyLeanFX and at FXFlow if you don't already. Our favorites are um, Reuters, Zero Hedge, Fgoria, Dow Jones FX Trader. I encourage you to look at who we follow, and you can follow um, them. Boris actually has a little list called Macro FX List that you may want to look at specifically. What are the best measures of sentiment and flow? There's the VIX, there's the COT. Um, you know, Dow Jones FX Trader actually reports on the COT every single time it's released, pretty much quick, very quickly after it's released. Um, and that basically shows us um, positioning. In terms of who to follow, there's Reuters, Zero Hedge, F Goria, and Dow Jones FX Trader. You can also look at my profile at Kathy Lean FX, see who I follow, and you can follow them. So, you know, Positioning is very important because when it's an extreme level, that could mean a turn in the currency because there's no more sellers or buyers left. And just as we saw in this chart here in the euro dollar. FXCM provides an SSI, which um, is a representation of retail FX flow. So I encourage you to take a look at that as well. If there's only one thing you take away from my talk today, um, I hope that it is that when you put on a trade and when we put on a trade, you want to have fundamentals, technicals, sentiment on your side for every single trade. So with that, I, you know, before I open the floor up to questions, I, um, there's a free trading strategy that we're get, giving out on bkforex.com. Just go on the website, sign up for it. It's free. Um, and you know, if you haven't done so, I encourage you to do so. Uh, I'm just going to talk quickly about what we do at BK Forex. I encourage you to look at our website, bkforex.com. What we do is we um, basically the core of our business is we give trade signals. We have position trading, day trading, news trading. We have um, a publicly available track record. We eat our own dog food. We're very um, we put you know every single one of our trades up on our website under trade results. Take a look at it. There's no hiding the good and the bad. Um, with our position trades, we do take this top-down approach, and we take it and we, you know, basically apply it to every single one of our trades. We establish a view. We make sure the view is consistent with overall risk appetite and sentiment. We identify key levels for entry as well as the best time to enter the trade. With our day trades, we trade the euro dollar, um, you know, primarily, and you know, we also SMS to you. Um, our alerts. So if you like to trade the euro dollar, you know, we trade the euro dollar. So, you know, that makes something you want to consider. You, our clients get our trade alerts via email. We text them to our clients as well. And we have um, a private Twitter feed just for um, our BK Forex um, subscribers. Every single trade is based upon fundamentals, technicals, and sentiment. Every trade comes with what we trade why we trade, stops and limits, and updates along the way. So you're not trading alone. We um, are basically sending you all of our different ideas. We also have a lot of education and daily interaction with us. We have um, you know, daily trader um, education. 
We have charts of the day. You know, one of the things I've been pounding every single week is pound Swiss and how it's going to break to our clients. And, um, you know, that's what we, the things that we do in our chart of the day, which is we present interesting cross ideas um, beyond the majors that you may not be looking at. We also have top five hot ideas every day, and we have an exclusive archive of trading strategies. And, you know, you can try all that for just $59. So I encourage you to go on bkforex.com or that link that um, FX Street just posted on um, and get a taste of what we do at BK Forex. So now I'd like to open the floor up to any questions that you may have. So fire away. Hi, Kathy. Do you ask to create markets by TV producers? I mean, to exaggerate a piece of news or event in order to push the market in a particular direction. Not at all. They never ask us to do that. They, the only thing they will say is, um, is, the only thing they will do is assign us the currency pair to come up with the trade idea at, which um, I think is, quite horrible, but please don't tell them that I said that, um, but that's what they will do. Um, when sometimes the real opportunities are not always in the euro dollar and the dollar yen, but sometimes they are, so, you know, it's still a fun show to watch. Do you use trade copier? Um, I do not use trade copier. NFPs in the co corner, if NFPs is more than 150,000 or less than 150,000, what will be your trade? Um, watch out. I will be putting out an NFP preview um, probably on Thursday, so uh, keep your eye out on that. I'll tweet it out when my article is out, and I'll give you my full views then. What are the best exotics to trade? Um, it's really about the opportunities. I mean, I'm loving dollar won right now, Korean won, um, and, and I, you know, uh, and because I think that maybe it could be the next dollar yen, um, but, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities to look for. Any, why is the market rallying on bad economic data today? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, it's not so much about um, risk on, risk off these days. It's really about um, country-specific factors that are driving the FX markets. And the market's bullish euros. Money's flowing into the euro right now. It's performing well. Dollars weakening as a result. Any thoughts about euro, Swiss, and cable right now? Um, I believe, I firmly believe that the trends that you've seen over the past month will continue, and that's the case for euro, Swiss, and cable. Is your discussion pre-planned between each other? Sometimes it looks like some folks are caught off guard by other comments. Well, I think that, you know, the topics that we're going, we discuss are um, pre-planned, like for example, we'll say, okay, we're talking about gold today, we're talking about the FOMC meeting, we're talking about the euro and how high it can go. The details, um, I mean, the, there are no details beyond that. Um, they, that's why sometimes, you know, some people may be caught off guard because um, all of the other details, aside from saying, okay, we're talking euro, we're talking gold, that's, you know, basically where it ends. Would you go long at euro dollar in current levels? Well, I mean, we were long this morning. Um, uh, BK, you know, uh, for our BK Forex clients, we banked our money on this break higher in the euro dollar. Um, you know, I can't say whether or not we're going to go long again. Um, you know, that's for our subscribers to know. On round numbers, which which are they? And give examples. Round numbers are basically the big round numbers, like 13500, even 13600. Um, 14000 will be more significant, of course, than 1.3900. That's what we mean by um, round numbers. What would you say is your best book? My the book that I'm most proud of is um, Day Trading and Swing Trading: The Currency Market. It's an intermediate book. A lot of people a lot of people like the little book of currency trading. It's a new a newbie book. Um, so if you're a newbie, um, you'll you'll probably like that. But the one I'm most proud of is Day Trading and Swing Trading: The Currency Market. Is there any correlation between Euro Pan and Euro Swiss? Not so much, even though you did see this big movement happen um, consecutive, you know, kind of contemporaneously with between both currency pairs. But if you look at our long-term basis, there's not much correlation. How can we get live economic data? Any alternatives to FX Street Calendar? And you know, there's tons of calendars out there. Um, Daily FX, Forex Factory, Twitter. Usually, it's the fastest. Um, there's actually an article on how. Um, fast Twitter news releases were released, and how the fastest, it was um, actually, I think everyone's equally fast, but um, the guy at Business Insider, um, you know, they, they were timing and saying that he's, you know, like usually there in the, in the second that the data is released. So in some ways, you don't even need to go to these places, because on Twitter, um, the, da the um, data is almost out instantaneously. 
Will the coming FOMC impact dollar yen? Will it rise or drop? Well, look at uh, my, I put out an FOMC preview this morning. Um, go on my Twitter feed, you'll see my link to it. You know, I talk about it all there. Um, did Todd hold, uphold that bet? Well, I haven't seen Todd in the kangaroo suit yet, so, um, you know, you can ask him about that. Um, can we expect a euro dollar 140? You know, I, we talked about, actually we didn't talk about it, so I dollar yen 100. I think 137, 138. Also this morning I tweet, tweeted my article on how high the euro dollar will rise, so, you know, I encourage you to read that as well. Um, do you have complete faith in economic data releases from China? I don't. But, what, you know, I said this on Money in Motion the other day. It is the only data that we get. So even if you don't have faith in it, it's the one the market's reacting off of, whether you like it or not. There's a presenter here that says, don't look at news and data, your comments. I, you know, we trade news and data. So um, it is the bread and butter of our business. And so I don't believe that at all. It's no different from someone who says that everything is priced in the chart, which I firmly do not believe in. Um, I believe that, you know, for, I believe that I, we should have fundamentals, technicals, and sentiment on the side of every single trade. And um, that is why I think fundamentals, technical, and sentiment are all important. And we need to look at all of them. Any other questions? All right. If not, um, I thank you all for joining me today. And, um, and uh, hopefully I will see you next month. Thank you. And, you know, even though I trash the show, please watch CNBC Money in Motion every Friday at 5.30 um, Eastern Time. It is fun nonetheless. Um, and, you know, just listen between, between the views that we have in terms of trade ideas and hopefully you get some good information there. Thank you.